What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you my video on what the Starfinder setting or the Starfinder TTRPG could bring to the world of video games. So a little bit about me, if this is my first video you happen to be watching, is that I play a ton of CRPGs, which are of course a genre of video game, but more specifically, these particular types of games tend to use adaptations of tabletop rule sets, like the ones used in Starfinder. Now Starfinder in particular has yet to see any sort of video game release. However, with any luck, that might change soon. Now, Starfinder might sound familiar to you if you are familiar with the Pathfinder TTRPG, because Starfinder is actually the sister game of Pathfinder. Now, Pathfinder actually does have a few different video games made for it, specifically the first edition of Pathfinder. Pathfinder itself is actually these days using a second edition and creating content for that. I've also made a video about what Pathfinder second edition could bring to video games as well. Now, before we go too much farther, Farther, I do want to start this video off by saying thank you to Paizo, the publisher of both Starfinder and Pathfinder, as they actually provided me the core rulebooks for both systems to research and make these videos off of. Now, towards the beginning of the video here, I do want to mention that the case for a Starfinder game is somewhat compelling in the fact that we might eventually get one. Why is this? Well, you see, as I mentioned, we already have Pathfinder 1E video games, and that is relevant because Starfinder is largely based on Pathfinder. Pathfinder 1E. It's just in a slightly different, more high-tech setting. But mechanically, it all works on basically the Pathfinder 1E system, meaning that video games which have the engine and things built around this system already exist. So Alcat Games, the people making Pathfinder, if they wanted to mix things up and do something a little different in just kind of a different setting, they could make a Starfinder RPG without having to completely overhaul their systems like they would have to to accommodate for Pathfinder 2E. And just for that reason alone, I think it is likely that we could potentially get a Starfinder RPG. There are a few other things that go into that reasoning, but they're definitely more speculative in nature. And while I obviously don't speak for Alcat Games, I do think there is a possibility of us getting a Starfinder game. Now, from there, let's actually talk the setting of Starfinder. The most important thing to understand is that basically Starfinder is Pathfinder in space. And I mean that somewhat literally, as it's the same universe, but way in the future. In fact, as I was alluding to both games using the same system, there is actually an entire chapter of the Starfinder core rulebook dedicated to converting things from Pathfinder into Starfinder. And while, again, Starfinder is a much more high-tech focused game, kind of built around the idea of space exploration and exploring the vast unknown, there is an entire chapter of the core rulebook dedicated to laying out exactly how to convert these things. And as such, if there's any particular aspect you like from Pathfinder, it could potentially find its way into a Starfinder game. But a large portion of Starfinder centers around an event known as The Gap. The game itself takes place about three centuries after The Gap, but what The Gap actually is is a period of history where everything is just kind of garbled. No one can give a clear account of anything, there are conflicting reports, some people just straight up can't remember it at all, there's no accurate records of what took place, it's just this weird period in history where everything doesn't make any sense. And when I read that, my first thing was like a dragon break from the Elder Scrolls. As functionally speaking, it sounds pretty similar. But the gap actually caused one other thing that's pretty important. You see, Pathfinder takes place on the world of Galarian, which is a real place in the Starfinder setting. However, after the gap, the planet mysteriously disappeared. And because this is the same setting, the people who are capable of speaking to the gods about these things, because the gods in Starfinder are largely the very same ones that you will see in Pathfinder, but nonetheless, these gods basically refuse to answer any questions about Galarian besides that its residents are safe and somewhere else. Beyond that, they simply will not tell anyone what happened. Which, by itself, is pretty interesting, but in this new setting, if we will, where we are really just way, way in the future from the Pathfinder setting, that of course brings about some changes. As I mentioned, it's a much more high-tech focused world where space travel is very readily possible, and a large part of the written portions of content that are made by the Adventure Paths for Starfinder focus on what are known as the Pact Worlds. These are a collection of planets that were pretty much in the same solar system as Galarian 
Centurion were, where they are kind of loosely affiliated with each other. Each planet rules itself independently and has its own culture and biomes, etc. But these worlds kind of all work together and they kind of form the core of what I would expect from a Starfinder game, simply because there's a lot of information on them. Now, just like any other TTRPG, you could of course homebrew a bunch of stuff because it is the vastness of space. But if we were to get a game, I would largely expect it to probably focus on these packed worlds. Now, I think that's especially important to mention, though, because when it comes to there being different worlds, you have to travel between them, right? Which, of course, means starships. So while it might surprise people to learn, Pathfinder actually does have canonical spaceships. But Starfinder, of course, takes that one step farther and kind of leans into the spaceships and space travel that you might be more familiar with. In fact, the core rulebook has an entire section on types of starships, how they travel, building your own. And as such, I would probably expect any sort of video game adaptation to make that a pretty significant part of the game in some way. Now, what that actually looks like, I think, is very much so up for debate. Would your starship just serve as a central hub from which you choose to travel to various planets, or maybe there's some sort of actual space combat mechanic? Hard to say, but it's certainly in the cards, and I definitely wanted to mention it. Because a Starfinder game without these starships would be kind of boring, to be honest. Now, the other thing in terms of how we're traveling and getting around is a very important thing called the drift. In fact, some people think the discovery of the drift was what led to the event known as the gap to begin with, because the drift is a sort of alternate dimension that people can enter into that seems to kind of warp space and time, and people can use this to travel the vastness of space very, very quickly. And it kind of reminds me of like hyperspace from any other sort of space adventure. However, the drift itself is controlled by an AI of sorts. So it's not something that other people really mess with. Like there's no people controlling it or anything. And in fact, one of Starfinder's most recent adventure paths is called the Drift Crisis, where something happens to this AI controlling it. And the whole point of that adventure path is exploring it and figuring out what happened, which just by itself, I think, is a fantastic medium for storytelling that could have some really cool implications. Just to kind of give you a taste of the modules and things being made for the Starfinder universe. Now, I just want to give a quick note on combat. As I mentioned, the Starfinder system just uses Pathfinder 1E rules. And there are a couple of things changed here and there for, of course, thematic reasons, like there's ranged weapons such as blaster weapons, like actual small arms fire, that type of stuff. But all of that is basically considered just a ranged attack roll or a ranged attack in that context. Now, the only like big change that I could really find combat wise in comparison to Pathfinder 1E was the armor class system, because mechanically this actually works a bit different. Like there's things that are thematically different via guns, etc. But the armor class system has seen a bit of an overhaul where rather than have your regular armor class, your touch armor class, your flat footed armor class, you actually just have physical and energy armor class, which is known as kinetic and energy armor class respectively. So rather than having to juggle all these conditions around what is affecting your armor class or what spell is affecting what type of armor class, it's basically just energy or physical, which I think is a lot easier to manage than Pathfinder 1E's regular system of normal AC, touch AC, flat footed, etc. I think it's just simpler to go the energy and physical route. So that's a change I liked, but it doesn't really overhaul the combat system. And beyond that, a lot of it just works the same way. And while there are changes to the skills, etc., of course, that would influence portions of a game. Again, there's an entire chapter that literally spells out how to translate these things between the two individual role-playing systems, so pretty easy to deal with there. So at this point, we've pretty much covered what Starfinder is, outside of being an obvious space adventure set with Pathfinder 1E rules for the most part, but a lot of the settings are the same, the gods are the same, there's a collection of worlds that serve as the sort of main content, if you will. But to kind of end on, I wanted to talk about some of the races and classes that have been altered or changed, or just added to. But as I mentioned, while Starfinder has its core classes and races, races. Nonetheless, if there's anything in Pathfinder, it has the possibility to be converted into Starfinder, and as such, there's just a ton of options for importing things and changing them around how you like. So what I'm about to list here is really just what Starfinder considers to be like its core stuff. Now, in terms of races, we get a couple of interesting ones. More specifically, the Vesk, which are basically lizardmen in space. We have the Isoki. I'm probably butchering that name, but these are basically rat people. Not exactly rat folk from Pathfinder 
Pathfinder, but kind of similar. Then there are the Sheeran, which are a more insect race. They strike me as particularly interesting because they used to be part of a hive mind that they managed to break away from, but they are very insectoid in nature and kind of creepy to look at. Then of course we have the Lashunta. These are like psychic people, again kind of insectoid in my opinion. They seem to have like antennae growing out of their head, which are pretty neat. And then because this is a high-tech world, you can of course be an android as well. All of these things are in addition to any Pathfinder race you can think of. For instance, dwarves, elves, all that stuff are known to exist, and while not exactly common, are certainly possible to be found in this world. And then we move on to the classes. Starfinder has what are considered seven core classes. Again, Pathfinder 1e classes can convert, though this is one area that I don't think a video game probably should do these things, simply because I think the mixing of traditional fantasy that is Pathfinder 1e and the Starfinder setting might be a bit of a juxtaposition too far at that point, because while the seven classes of Starfinder do of course use things like magic, etc., it's more thematic to the setting than, say, Pathfinder's is. And while there are some classes I think that would translate relatively easy, like a wizard, because magic is magic in this setting. I think trying to convert every class from Pathfinder into a Starfinder game would be a mistake, and simply for a cohesive theme, I think sticking to the core classes at the very least of Starfinder, or maybe some of the expanded ones from the different rulebooks, etc., would probably be the way to go. If only because, again, the Starfinder classes are built around this setting, and I think it makes more sense without it being a bit too much of a mishmash. But the seven classes of Starfinder are the Envoy, Mechanic, Mystic, Operative, Solarian, Soldier, and the Technomancer. Now the Envoy and the Operative are kind of your roguish types. The Envoy in particular is more of a smooth talker. They're the type to use diplomacy, etc., whereas an Operative is more like an assassin. They can choose a specialization, so these are just kind of general things that we're talking about, but I don't want to get too incredibly granular with these. Then we have classes like the Solarian, the Mystic, and the Technomancer. Answer. These all use magic powers of some sort. The Solarian is especially interesting to me because they harness the power of the stars, actually. They use stellar energy, and in some ways they're kind of similar to a cleric. But they have a lot of abilities that kind of center around using stellar energy that focus on a specific moat of stellar energy that follows these people around that they can kind of access to augment their abilities, their weapons, armor, etc. Overall, I think the Solarian of all the classes in Starfinder was probably my personal favorite that I had read about, and then the Mystic and the Technomancer are more just kind of standard classes. The Technomancer in particular is fairly similar to like a wizard or an arcanist mechanically, and then a Mystic in my opinion was very similar to a sorcerer. The Mechanic was an interesting one to me in particular. They kind of strike me as a druid, weirdly enough at least on a mechanical level, because they get to choose an AI. This AI can be a thing that's just kind of like attached to them, or it can be a drone, which kind of functions as an animal companion, which was pretty neat. And then we have the soldier. The soldier is, as you might expect, basically the fighter of the Starfinder universe. Definitely very versatile. They can do a lot of things, but it's kind of like your basic one. And then all of these things can be combined with a theme. Now, a theme kind of takes the place of a background in comparison to Pathfinder. So your theme is what your character did, if you will, beforehand. Were they a pilot or something else, etc.? Your theme is going to give you a modifier to one of your ability scores, as well as some features associated with that particular theme at the levels of 1, 6, 12, and 18. And it just kind of adds a little extra flavor to whatever class you are already playing. But to wrap all this up and kind of draw a conclusion, I think what Starfinder could bring to video games more than anything else is frankly something that we just don't see a lot of, and that is a CRPG set in space. I think Starfinder truthfully might be the best game to do this because we already have examples of Pathfinder 1E's system being used in this fashion. Because again, mechanically, Pathfinder 1E and Starfinder are more or less the same thing. There's a couple minor tweaks, of course, but on a mechanical system level, the dice rolls and everything behind the scenes, it's essentially the same game. The change is that Starfinder is, of course, this high-tech space adventure, whereas Pathfinder is more traditional high fantasy stuff. But Starfinder, simply by the virtue of taking place in space where we're using things like starships and the drift to traverse the world, I think that just opens up so many possibilities for storytelling that can be as small and isolated or as large and universe changing as you want them to be. I think there's a lot of interesting lore that goes into these worlds that we didn't really discuss here because it'd be a little bit much for the scope of this video. But you combine all of those interesting facts with the fact that Alcat Games in particular, again, are already has all this 
Pathfinder 1e work put into their system already, which means if they really wanted to, they could basically reskin, which is a little bit reductive. I don't necessarily like to put it that way, but they could, for lack of a better term, kind of reskin what they've already got going for them. And at that point, have a really cool RPG on their hands that feels significantly different from Pathfinder and what they've done up to this point. Which, on the back of their most recent title, Wrath of the Righteous, which uses things like mythic power, etc., which by itself I think would be very hard to follow up with on just about any other Pathfinder setting, I think the change to a different setting could be a great palette cleanser that essentially uses the same system, and as such, I think it is certainly in the realm of possibility that we'll see a Starfinder game. There you go, guys. That is all I've got for you. Let me know how you feel about the potential for a Starfinder video game down in the comments section below. Overall, though, I think it's a really cool setting with a unique take on space and space exploration that would be really cool to see. But again, thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe, typical YouTube jazz. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.